Streams are really dynamic and exciting. They are always changing. My name is Leslie Zucker and I'm the Stream Program Coordinator for Cornell Cooperative Extension of Ulster County with the Ashokan Stream Management Program. And I am Allison Lent. I am the Stream Assessment Coordinator for Ulster County Soil and Water Conservation District. You guys all just love what you do. It's interesting. <laughs> yes. Well, I think I probably have the, the most awesome job out of everyone. Well. I kind of she share does. the same job Go here. ahead and say it, you do. <laughs> but I get to do a lot, I spend a lot of my time playing around in the streams, getting my feet wet and collecting stream data, do a lot of stream assessments, like what we are doing here in the Little Beaver Kill, walking the stream from head to toe. We made it a priority for this season to come out here and walk the Little Beaver Kill to figure out exactly why it's happy versus all the other streams that we've walked in the past. And one of the major differences about the Little Beaver Kill versus other streams in the Catskills is that it has a really wide, flat, low gradient valley. A lot of our streams elsewhere in the Catskills are really steep. They don't have a lot of access to floodplains, so all of that energy is concentrated in the channel and we get a lot of erosion issues. But here in the Little Beaver Kill, it's very, sh very wide. It's got access to these vast floodplains. Uh, very low gradient, so we got like little riffle pool. So as part of this assessment that we're doing on, in the Little Beaver Kill watershed, is we're trying to actually physically map a lot of stream features, such as erosion, revetment, uh, where we might find plant material sources like willows and dogwoods and where we might find good planting sites um, to do some buffer restoration. Something that our program, the Ashokan Watershed Stream Management Program, is trying to do is provide you know, information to local landowners that have streamside property um, to inform them that you know maybe they can leave a little area next to the stream with some native vegetation and kind of let it be natural because of all the benefits. Uh, and we even offer a program with the Cascale Streams Buffer Initiative. And we will actually provide plant material and labor to install it. Well, a couple of different kinds here. We get pretty excited when we find willows in the uh, near the channel. Because one, well, it's native and is a ideal plant to have in the riparian zone. And two, we are constantly looking for plant material sources for buffer restoration projects that we do elsewhere. We love to target willows and dogwood species. There's several in the Catskills. And we love to target them because they are easy to propagate. All we have to do is cut off a few stems and cut them into little two feet chunks and go pound them in the ground somewhere else and then they will root themselves. It takes very little effort and you can plant a lot of willows very quickly and they grow really quickly so that's why we like them. Right now we're collecting a proposed planting site which we will hand over to our Catskill Streams Buffer Initiative Coordinator and he will reach out to the landowners later, at a later time to propose doing some restoration here. And they are recording with their GPS. They are gathering information on the width, the length of the area that might you know, be suitable for doing some riparian buffer work here. 
Uh, so they're taking some notes of what is currently the plant community that's currently existing here. There's a lot of grasses and sedges. So there's some good stuff, but there's lacking a there's lacking trees and larger shrubs like willows and dogwoods that you would typically see in a situation like this. There's also a lot of invasive species. There's some right upstream and there's some right behind me. Uh, a lot of multiflora rows here and it will continue to probably take over if nothing is done to halt its progression. So this part of this planting project plan would be to come in with a lot of potted material, a lot of trees and shrubs would probably go in here and there would also be some invasive species removal work. So it, it would be a big project but very beneficial one for this section of stream. Directly downstream of Yankee Town Pond in that really well forested area down there there are some beautiful roots in the bank that are just doing a phenomenal job in holding those those stream makes together, especially down there because the access to floodplain is not as good as it is here. So all of that energy is concentrated in the channel and which means that there's a lot of erosive power there. They can do a lot of damage to the banks, but those woody roots that the trees are offering really hold that soil together and prevent it from, from blowing out and the channel over widening, which can cause a series of instability in that reach. So here we're looking at some glacial deposits, glacial till, and it is very rich in clay-sized sediments, which can be potentially harmful for water quality. As it is very hard, it is very, very cohesive with all that clay sediments, as well as all these little pieces of gravel. And it's actually, it doesn't erode as easily as say a bank that has a lot of sand, cobble, gravel mixture that might've been deposited there by a river a long time ago. So what it is, certainly a water quality issue, but something like this, this what we call lodgement hill, won't erode quite as easily. I love all these like huge boulders coming out of it because these are actually brought down by the glacier as well. There's another one sticking out right there and it's you know surrounded by all these like other like an entire matrix of clay till around it. And eventually the stream will erode around these big boulders and just kind of leave the big boulders in the middle of the channel. So there's some like out in the middle of the channel over here that the stream didn't necessarily put them there. They just were eroded around over time. And because the stream doesn't have enough energy to move those big boulders, they just kind of stay there. A rock that's called gneiss and uh, it's from the Adirondack Mountains. It was brought here by a glacier and most of the rocks that you see in the stream are actually sandstones and shales possibly but mostly sandstones in this area and something like that rock a nice a metamorphic rock is no, it was not sourced from the, the Catskill region. That was brought from way far up north. Yeah, the streams are very dynamic systems and they don't tend to stay in one spot forever. Over time they do, they do move and they do widen out the valley and make this nice alluvial valley.
streams are really dynamic and exciting. They are always changing. And so I think that's one of the appeals of working with streams. You know, it's not it's not static, it's never boring. No. There are a lot of management issues that matter to people, so we get to help people as well, and that feels good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Water is such an important resource. Mm -hmm. It's important for people, it's important for life in general. It has a lot of economic benefits, especially if you have a really healthy system that can really support fishing and recreation and also supply much needed important clean water supply for drinking. So there's a lot of important work that goes into protecting these resources and making sure that it's sustainable for generations to come.